McHugh, and today I'm going to take you through all the steps for painting a landscape. Uh, we'll start with the drawing and then move into the painting and I'll try to get you through each step, but go ahead and pause the video if you need to catch up and you can email me if you have any questions. I'll send you my email at the end of the video. Uh, so the first thing we need to do today is head out to the park and go look for our subject. So let's grab our sketching supplies and our camera and let's go. So when you're out in nature, there can be a little bit too much information. The trick is to isolate one main subject. So in my search, I came across this one tree, caught my interest. First step is sit down and do your value study. Simplifying all your shapes and dividing them into main chunks of value, and then transfer the drawing to my watercolor paper and mask off the whites. First, I dip my brush into some soapy water. Dish soap helps protect it. Then I'm only masking the areas where I want hard edges, so just around the fronds and get some of those delicate marks in there. Don't be too thick and heavy with your masking fluid because it will be very noticeable later. So once that's dry, now you're ready to paint. And here are the colors. Now we mix up a nice muddy blue wash for the sky. Add some of that warm red to the blue to make kind of down purple, add some other blue, maybe dotted yellow. Mostly just graying it down, just tons and tons. Go ahead and drag your wash from one side to the other and then increase the slant a little bit. Help gravity will pull it down a little faster for you. Always keep that nice bead of water forming at the bottom there. That way if you're wet enough you won't get any lines. some grayed down greens. So pull some yellow and purple over to my blues and then just dot in that tree top in the background. And remember that the light's coming at you from the right hand corner. So that right hand side of the tree will be a little bit lighter. And then you can build up along the side of the trunk so that you're not painting the trunk and this is the negative painting that we're doing here. And just keep the colors soft and very grayed down, and that will keep them far away in the distance. So now I'm dotting in some sort of purple gray into there and trick is to just keep building your color. You'll notice that when it's wet like this, as it dries, it'll get a lot lighter. And so I just keep building it up as it's drying.
Okay, so enough of that top part. Now we can do another layer under there. And I keep a space of dry paper just connected a little bit. That way separates those planes a little bit for you. My tree's got a little bit of a hard edge forming there up in the top. So I'm gonna grab my magic spray bottle, spritz it. That's what's happening there. I had to fire my cameraman. some puddles forming just gently blot them with a towel and going flat now because I've got too much stuff dripping down on me and I want things to stay in place final touches and then let that part dry and then I'll mix up another soft gray color and start working on that little wall and skip around a little bit so you leave some open holes for the highlights next part is the reflection of what it's what is above the wall so we're trying to mimic those same colors a bit next wash down and this is the whole bottom quarter of the painting and you can go right over everything go up to the edge of the wall and paint over the part of the tree that's hanging into the water and the masking fluid is going to protect our whites and the next layer will be darker on top of it so you don't have to paint around those shapes but we are leaving these gaps for where the stone wall is reflecting into the water down there touches the water and then I can start dotting in some of the background noise over here and all it is is just light bits of green and I'll do that spray again so that things drip down and just give sort of an abstract loose background and you don't have to paint any detail the 
different colors and the transitions and the value will make it look like detail. It's all about creating an illusion. I'm getting a little darker as I get down towards the base and I'm only painting to the top of that little stone wall there and let it stop. Now I'm going to mix up some, some more different greens and blues and do this swirl brush so I'm messing up my brush, dipping it in the paint to make these loose tree leaf marks. So the messy brush does these the best. And don't worry, your brush will go back to normal when you dip it back in the water. Now I'm working on this stone wall and I'm just putting in some warm patches and some cool patches. And I use that scarlet to make kind of a warm brown and then add more blue to cool it down. And you always want that back and forth variation from warm to cool. So now it's time for the really dark darks, and this is when I bring in that raw sepia, but I am Still mixing it with blue and purple so it's not just straight dark brown. That would be too cold. You always want colors mixing and just getting into the shadow areas. And then we add the dark cracks in the wall and here I did use just straight sepia so it's really dark. Take some water around that edge at the bottom and smooth it a bit and now you have that nice reflection underneath. Now I'm putting in those darks for that area of the stuff that's hanging under the tree. And this I'm using the sepia mixed with some of the magenta and some of the blue so I got a few different colors going through there and you can just go right over the masking fluid.
And then you go up and get all those dark shadow areas by the trunks and underneath the fronds. I've got my little liner brush and I'll put in a couple branches up here in my leaves. So I've still got the masking fluid on and I'm just putting some shadows on the underside of the fronds and then after I put those in I'll give them a little spritz so that they float out and have some soft fluffy edges around the hard ones. shadow where that tree branch is hanging over the water and so I'll paint that in and then I'll spray it again to soften the edges taken off the masking fluid and now I'm coming in and just painting in the palm fronds and here I'm using brighter colors to pull my subject forward separate it from the background and uh, keeping some white spaces but still always mixing lots of colors so it's yellow and turquoise and a little bit of everything in some areas
So here these things are too white, so I just have a damp brush and I'm pulling some of that pigment that's already on there back into it to give it some shadow. And a few more extra darks on the shadow side of the fronds. touches really and then uh, put some more darks into the background spritz it a little more where it needs it and that's about it <laughs>